What's going on guys? Today in the shop we've got Carlos's cousin, Sportsman uh, 1000. It is the High Lifter Edition and after the ride at Gator Run when he picked up his uh, Honda, went for it and this thing broke a few things and also had just a few things left over from a minor wreck that he had. So we're going to go through it, kind of bulletproof it to make it just an all around nice machine. Um, the build consists of, we're going to first go ahead and replace that pinion shaft down there or that pinion bearing support. That's got to be done pretty much on all the 1000s and 850s. They just break out. That's the first thing. Second thing is this thing's going to be lifted up two inches by a two inch high lifter lift kit, which is over there. And when you lift these things up, you've got to space them out. So we've got one and a half inch wheel spacers all the way around. And you have to due to that snorkel being too close to the tire. Along with that, whenever he was at a ride and he had some, um, uh, underglows mounted up they said they made a short of something or so and anyways from that the starter started clicking on them so we got a new starter went ahead and kind of took it off just to compare parts and that's what this is over here and i like this a whole lot better due to on the factory players one both of these terminals are exposed and on this newer one here one of them is blocked off completely kind of sealed heat shrunk and tightly fitted around it so that's going to be the new starter we got a new winch rope and black hook because he broke this one off. It's only down to there. Not a big deal. Happens a lot. So that's that. On this one here, the main thing is that his throttle just broke off, which is very normal for the 1000s and 850s. They're just too much leverage, and I guess they just snap off. This factory one snapped off about right there. And so with this one here, it's a hit or miss, I guess, if you need to modify it or not. And the only modification is you can kind of see there that I just had to shave that down to fit into the grooves a little bit more. That fits now. Good to go. Here's a two inch lift. The one and a half inch wheel spacers. And on this one too, we also have got the Rogue Grill coming in. Rogue Grill and custom snorkels by me. Just a little extensions. Not a big deal. Okay, so got the starter replaced. It's a whole lot easier probably on the non high lifter editions because you don't have all the snorkels in the way. This one here with the belt intake, it comes like right up and over and it ties into there. The belt exhaust is right there. Just drop that one down a little bit, push it out of the way. I'll loosen up both clamps from there and from right there. Then you can just pull it out of the way and then it opens it up. So that's just done with some Allen bolts, just two of them. Grease up your O-rings, put it back in there and you're set to go. This thing now starts beautifully. Getting ready to install the rear lift kit on this thing. They supply a big zip tie just to go around this piece here to attach to this bar. This one's already touching, and so all that's really going to do is just help it stay there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, but you have to run a one inch wheel spacer because, like I saw or showed before, this rear tire is going to hit that. And you can kind of already see where like the mud would hit, even though this one doesn't because it's all stock. Spacer up there bracket on the inside, bracket on the outside, the new shorter bolts, both sides same way. Everything lines up perfectly. Zip tie that snorkel to that frame and now you can see the difference now. A whole lot of difference. The one inch would work but the inch and a half is better because when you do lift it up it sucks it in a little bit more. Uh, the front is not done so there's your difference about right there. Not a lot. The stability of it is going to be a whole lot better. The ground clearance is a whole lot better. The axles, everything else is not at a big angle, so you guys are good there. Not worried about those at all. So that is the 2 inch lift kit with the 1.5 inch wheel spacers. If you guys are running aftermarket wheels, you do not need the spacers, but it's always kind of a good idea in my book. Okay, so the new billet pinion plate here has arrived from Checo or Seco Racing. Everything looks amazing on it. It's all billet. Comes with new fasteners here that do fit very nicely. It already comes with a new seal and bearing installed. Some stickers and really nice detailed color instructions. So the fit and finish on this sucker is going to be super nice. I can already tell, but and his is not broke yet. But we're just taking care of it before it does because it does seem like all of them do break. 
But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get this sucker installed. Should be pretty simple. So to do that pinion support bearing on the front diff right here, that piece right there always breaks off. I don't know if it just doesn't support it enough. They kind of upgraded it a little bit on the high lifter editions, but it's still just not enough. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that. In order to get that out, I just undid the brake caliper here, undid the tie rod, and that was just enough to get the, uh, the, the punch right here into that shaft and pull out that roll pin. That'll knock that thing out. This one here is actually already loose. I know you can't see that on video, but it is loose. You're gonna knock that out. Uh, just slide this whole drive shaft back enough. Like it's just enough, just enough to clear it and drop down. When that does it, we're gonna go ahead and pull out those four star fittings there, Torx bits. Okay, so this wheeler right here was involved in a front end collision. I mean, the power kind of got away from him and he hit a tree and it kind of bent some stuff. He took it to a shop and if you notice here that this brake line is routed up in between the axle and the upper A-arm. On this side here, they did not route this one correctly. It's on top of the A-arm. So every time he turns, that brake line is just getting pinched. I'm not even gonna turn it because I just don't wanna break that brake line right here. I got to reroute that thing below here. And with that being said, the lift on the front doesn't fit. The lift here is gonna fit right there, but in order to do that, you gotta redo that mounting point. Cause that is gonna go there. And with that said, that's just not gonna work. So this brake line's gotta be moved. You can already see what was kinda rubbing right there. Not good guys. I mean, it's not that hard to put stuff back together the way it came off. Pay attention. Put it back together. I mean, oh geez, never mind. So this is what bugs me about Gorilla Axle. Gorilla Axle wasn't, it was huge back in the day, went away, came back. It's just, I've never liked them. I never liked any of their products. I didn't like the company. So, um, and this is why, I mean, this right here is pretty much, these are all Gorillas. You know, I guess when the company came back, whatever. And this is the max travel I can get out of it. The angle is not even bad, but I can't even get this thing to sit down any more than what it is. I mean, that's how far off it is. If I do that anymore, you're just putting tons of stress on the axles constantly, and I'm not doing that. I mean, this is, you take the shock out, and that's full droop. Like, even the tie rod's not on it to hinder it that way, so it's just pretty sad. I mean, you can feel that axle already binding up. So basically, if we're going to want to run the front lift, uh, he just kind of needs other different axles, or uh, either that or he's going to break, he's going to need an axle if I put it on. So what I'm going to do is just crank up the shocks here in the front. They're already at the soffit setting here in the rear. Sometimes they run two people on this thing. And so overall, I guess that'll help, but we'll see how it looks when everything's bolted up. And I don't think I'm gonna run the front wheel spacers because if I just run front wheel spacers without a lift, it's gonna look too much. So we'll see. So after like four weeks, uh, this grill finally came in from Rogue Off Road. I'm pretty sure it's made to order. But I ordered it from uh, sidebysidestuff.com because it just is cheaper. It's cheaper by like 50 bucks instead of going straight from Rogue. Uh, but it took four weeks, so it would have taken that long for anyone. So now that that's in, we can finally get it installed. Uh, just four bolt holes here. And yeah, you do have to drill bigger holes on the bottom to feed the nuts up through. But yeah, we went with the all black on this one, no orange. Because that's kind of what the scheme he's going to want to go with. I already took off all the stickers that had anything orange on them got that billet thing in there and also these are the snorkels They're definitely not done got to finish painting them up but i was kind of waiting on the cover here in order to make sure they did clear which they do clear everywhere so now that that's in gonna go ahead and mount this up get those snorkels off and painted it and if you can or can't tell this is now being filmed with a gopro hero 8 black so the hopefully lighting sound uh, the image stab stabilization on it's gonna be a whole lot better but uh, yeah what you just previously previously saw was all on a phone so now it's going back to this and also I think some of it's gonna be on a hero 4 but yeah now we're all set up all right anyways let's get this thing mounted well here it is installed and kind of like uh, old nasty posted up on his YouTube channel on this radiator rack it's ridiculous how they have these bolts and everything mounted up they tell you to drill a big hole up underneath there 
like that so you can fit in anything. There's a, like a six inch gap right here. It's just ridiculous. And then they want a flat washer, uh, a yeah, yeah, lock washer, just go up in there. There's just no way to reach up in there. Ended up getting it with um, like two magnets, needle nose pliers, whatever. It's just crap. What they need to do is give you like a little nut insert or something, kind of like you did with like little knobs or something to have a nice nut on top so you can feed the bolt up through to hold it. It's, it's just ridiculous. But anyways, now that's done. Um, now we're going to go on and paint up these snorkels. But I do like the all black. And then you can still see everything. You can see his underglows down in there. Those are probably going to be a whole lot more uh, bright now. And maybe, hopefully they're not going to be in your face. I think they're going to be tucked up just enough that we're, I mean, you'll maybe except for like that one there. But uh, yeah. And all the snorkels are, are just four. That's a two inch to two inch Fernco. And to a 22 and a half, maybe an eight inch riser to a 90 up top. And they are a little spaced out now, but when they're all said and done and they're all zip tied together, they will be just right. I mean, if you guys are going to, you know, spend the $150 or whatever for the Highlifter Snorkel Kit, that's what you're going to get with some nicer looking tops. But when these are all lined up, it looks sleek and everything. So I'm going to paint it up with the bed liner. And this is the bed liner I use. I, this is only pretty much sold or I can only find this at O'Reilly's, but it's just the Duplicolor truck bed liner. This stuff has got a great texture to it, matches a bunch of the texture, even kind of like that texture there. Uh, but it's very easy to cover up if anything happens to it or you want to add to it. It's just good stuff and it, it dries quick, sprays on very nice and even. So that's what I use. Pick up a can if you guys don't have it already.